I really don't know where to start on this. Frankly, this is a dangerous, this is a dangerous bill from a governance standpoint, an economic standpoint, and a scientific standpoint. This bill is inspired not by a need to coordinate regulation as it's being sold, but by a, a desire to eliminate regulation. My first reason for opposing it, it's not really an Oregon bill, and you heard the uh, senator, the uh, representative from, uh, senator, sorry, representative from Ashland um, speak to that. It's a concept promoted by an organization that works on behalf of companies seeking monopoly over food crops. And one company has threatened to sue any state that dares to pass bills mandating the labeling of food grown from their genetically modified project products. Their position is that states have no right to regulate them. They are trying to say, have the state do the work through this bill of saying that counties aren't the boss of them. But make no mistake, you're not the boss of me will be directed at the state next. And make Excuse no mistake. Excuse me, Representative. Yes. Representative Berger, for what purpose are you in the queue? Madam Speaker, would you please ask the Speaker to remain germane to the merits of the bill, not the provenance of the bill that he alleges? Okay. Sorry. Thank, Thank you, Representative. You. Thank you, Representative. Well, some of the science, I'll go to the science. Some of the science is still out regarding GMO crops. But some of it isn't. We know that cross-pollination with existing crops happens and that there are already places in the world where certain plants without genetically engineered genes have been wiped out by cross-pollination. All Canadian canola has Roundup-ready gene. And of course, if that pollen is released into the wild, well, you can't kill it with Roundup. There's, it's already a resistant weed in California. It is a massive experiment we're dealing with here. Despite the governor's letter promising to direction to the State Department of Agriculture to use its, its existing authority to deal with conflicts between genetically modified and non-modified crops in the context of this vote, we don't have a definition as to what that authority is and whether it's adequate to the job. And do they have the staff and the resources to do the job? We do know that the state is not currently providing the cover that farmers need when they are harmed. Their business is harmed. Their entire industry is put at risk by these products. This vote is a preemption to local government with nothing to take its place immediately and an emergency clause to boot. Regarding the science, the argument that this is just like selective breeding is both wrong and insulting. The expectation is that none of us in the legislature knows anything about genetic engineering. But I have genetically engineered organisms in labs and I know something about what's involved. For example, it takes significant alteration of the genetic underpinnings of the me me metabolic machinery of the plant to make it Roundup ready. And we do not have enough information really about the residues of Roundup and its metabolites in the crops that are grown this way. This science is also unsettled regarding Bacillus thuringiensis gene, a gene from a bac Bacillus inserted into cotton and other crops to cause plants to kill insect pests. And it also kills non-pest insects as well. Trying, and now we're trying to discover, the science is trying to discover which ones. We do know that resistance to the effects of the toxin produced by the BT gene has been uh, found in other places. The insects are clever, and they're cleverly adapting resistance to the BT gene, and now we have another chemical and genetic war arms race underway. We should also understand that folks who push for labeling these products are not only concerned about the modified genes themselves, but also about the residues of pesticides and herbicides from the agricultural practices enabled by these modified genes. The fundamental question is, do we have a right to decide whether to be experimented on or not? But this bill actually applies to a lot more than GMO crops. The language is incredibly broad, as you heard over earlier. The economic devastation wrought worldwide by the intricacies of pat patent protection of genetically engineered seed cannot be overstated. Small farmers have been sued to prevent them from saving seeds from the plants they sowed, nurtured, and harvested, as farmers have done since the dawn of agriculture. They have even been sued for saving seeds from their own crops contaminated by the pollen from, from uh, patented plant products. We are dealing here with predatory monopolies. We should not make a deal. The potential for our own $2 billion heritage seed and organic pr produce industries to be ruined is even more immediate. These are thousands of livelihoods at, re at risk, as well as the integrity of our food supply. This bill simply has no place in this procedural environment, if it has a place anywhere. 
My constituents are experiencing a degree of cynicism about this process. My calls and emails indicate that. We are doing damage to our credibility and, to the, and that of the very enterprise of government. And that makes me sad and it frankly also makes me very mad. If these are good ideas, they should withstand the open scrutiny of a regular deliberative process. And we have not had that here. If they can't, Representative, they excuse pass. me. Representative Harker yields his time. Please continue. Thank you. If they can't, they shouldn't pass. And this bill would presumably stand if the Oregon Supreme Court rules against some of the funding mechanisms and other bills in this package, while it's, while the, the, it's for the kids components could not. This bill takes a step or several steps down a very risky road. It has no place in this, in this procedural environment, if it has any place at all. Let me just be real clear about this so that no one has any mistake. I urge a very loud no for this bill. Thank you. 